there seems to be this class of books that, and I'm talking specifically about fiction here, that they're certainly a part of the canon. Everyone knows about them. Everyone can pair up the name of the author with the name of the book, but they still don't seem to re des uh, to get that amount of attention that they really, really deserve. You don't see them read very often on university syllabi. A, a lot of people don't often read them for uh, pleasure. It's, it's rare enough for people to read the classics for pleasure anyway, but uh, some of them get even less attention than that. And this really, i found, is one of those books. The book is The Good Soldier by Ford Maddox Ford. And um, I, I really, really, really loved it. I read it a couple of years ago. I found this uh, nice Barnes & Noble edition and picked it up. And really, it's 100 years old, uh, well, actually, uh, 1915, so almost 98 years old. And I wasn't expecting on, on finding a, an Edwardian-era novel so compelling and so wonderfully drawn. The novel follows two well-to-do couples, John, who is the narrator, and Florence Dowell, that's one couple, and there's Edward and Leonora Ashburnham. And they follow both of these through the course of their relationships, especially Edward's endless philandering with any woman who will submit to his relentless sexual advances. The story which is told long after the events have actually transpired, the ones that happened in the novel. The story details Dowell's conversion from an innocent onlooker in the four-way relationship into a man whose world has been turned upside down by the discovery that his wife has tried to uh, seduce his best friend. Even then, Dowell chalks up Ashburnham's dalliances to mere sentimentalism, a need to paternalistically place himself in a situation where he's seen as the selfless hero, as the titular good soldier. While Dowell is sometimes more than fair with Ashburnham, at times he relentlessly mocks him, commenting on his stupid expressions and his petit bourgeois concern with keeping up appearances. Again, that that thing that many Victorian and Edwardian novels are over, overly concerned with, even in the face of the sham that is his marriage. Ford seems to be looking for answers to explain such behavior, but doesn't even seem convinced by his own dubious explanations. Marked by a, a radical break with that earlier traditional Victorian novel that I was talking about. The Good Soldier is highly evocative of the society novels written by people like Henry James and Edith Wharton and even even though we don't really associate him as being a, a, a society novelist, D.H. Lawrence for the sort of uh, the way sexuality can transform the dynamics of a relationship or a set of relationships. Adultery is discussed quite openly and frankly and directly, and instead of the morally certain, honest, objective narration that we see in a lot of the work before it, uh, Ford's narrator is bereft when he finds his search for meaning in simplicity an empty one and finding in its place an ambiguous and unreliable world. This is a hard pill to swallow for those who have been weaned on people like Dickens and Thackeray and Trollope. Its subtlety and sensitive psychological representations of the characters mirror the complexities of, of people, not, not characters from opera bouffe or something. One of the most fascinating aspects of the story is how totally conflicted Dowell remains throughout the entire novel. I mean, he is the epitome of the unreliable narrator. The authority of his narrative voice waxes and wanes, mostly wanes, through the entire story, which might be frustrating for some readers, uh, but was a really 
welcome relief for me. Uh, concomitant with his voice is an overall ambiance of moral turpitude and decadence, which really permeates the novel, and not simply as a result of Florence and Ashburnham's affair. Dowell is never slow to remind the reader that he knows little, that he might be wrong, that this was only the way things seemed to him. It's hardly a surprise that Ford, who considered himself an Impressionist, much in the same vein as many artists at the end of the 19th century in the in the visual arts considered themselves Impressionists, has very much uh, lived up to the name of, of Impressionism, and sort of capturing Dowell's... He, he makes absolutely no attempt to find the facts or learn the objective truth, because it very much seems to Dowell, and even more to Ford Maddox Ford, that looking for something like that would be uh, bootless. And uh, he, he's always talking about fleeting impressions and reminiscences, which always fall short of cohering into a single unified story whose, character, whose character's motivations are convincingly delineated. And one of the results of Ford's technique is that it breaks with one of, uh, uh, one of our usual responses when we have completed a novel a piece of, of dramatic fiction. Since Aristotle, we've come to find some sort of intellectual catharsis from tragedy. But this is a story that complicates that expectation in a number of ways, even if we are afforded some sort of edification in human moral psychology, which I think we are. The novel was written in 1915, as I said, no doubt a perilous time in European history, and world history more generally. But at the risk of committing an egregious post hoc ergo prompter hoc logical fallacy, it might be that Ford's narrative is indicative of a world on the precipice of the Great War, whose social and cultural orders have shifted from firmly hierarchical to nebulous in less than a generation. And even if you don't care for the novel itself, it would be really tough to deny its importance in, 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 it, in the canon of works that need to be carefully and thoughtfully read to have a fuller and, and more appreciative knowledge of 20th century literature, English literature in particular. I cherished it, I really loved it, and its characters seemed like some of the most artfully drawn that I'd read in a while. Weeks after having finished it, and I did write this uh, a couple of years ago, weeks after having finished it, uh, the various tete-a-tetes which occur uh, in the novel and interrelationships continued to sort of dance through my head while I imagined sitting down next to Dowell while he told me his story by the fireplace. So it's a wonderful book. If you haven't read it, go read it. I think you'll really enjoy it, and even if you've read it, go read it again. The Good Soldier by Ford Maddox Ford.